Hello, I'm Katherine Martinez. Welcome to the fun world of Perfect Embroidery Pro software. Whether you have decided on your own you had to have it or saw it demonstrated at one of the inspiration socials, you now own a very powerful yet easy to use software that will allow you to create lettering or personalize your projects, change existing designs, convert children's drawings or specific artwork into embroidery, and so much more. If you need help installing and registering the program, please go to www.inspirationsupport.com. Click on Inspiration Resources on the right side of the screen. Then, under Perfect Embroidery Pro, you'll see Software Registration Help and Installation Instructions. This video is one in a series of introductory videos to get you comfortable with the basics of the software. You'll get more from these videos if you've already done stitching on your embroidery machine to have some reference and knowledge of the embroidery process, including hooping, choosing stabilizers based on design and fabric types, and the like. If you haven't, you'll want to visit your dealer for lessons and how to do so. Just as when you move into a new house, you explore it before the furniture is in, you look in the closets, check out the attic in the basement, we're going to do the same with the screen and look around a bit. Remember, this is a video. You can watch it, pause it, reverse direction, and watch it over and over until you are comfortable with the particular procedure or technique. When you install the software, it puts a shortcut icon on the desktop, which you would double click to launch Perfect Embroidery Pro. You are brought to the My Inspiration Today window. In the upper portion of the screen, three blue buttons offer access to help. Software support offers two choices. You can go to the forum for all of your how do I questions and to the help desk for more technical questions. You have an online manual that is available at any time. Here, you can click to receive the latest software update. To see the update explained, you'll want to go to the What's New button at the bottom of the screen. In the middle, you have the Pure Inspiration area. It offers easy access to all of the different ways to be inspired. For example, you could go directly to Eileen's blog or to really cool projects with complete instructions from Tamara Evans. Over at the lower right, the newest group of free designs are just a few clicks away. However, maybe it's a day you want to dive right into the software. At the bottom of the screen, one click will get you to a new design screen, or a click to open the folder last used. If you click Open Recently Used, it actually opens the last design used into the screen. We're going to create a new design. Here we are, your new home away from home. There are a number of buttons, bars, windows, and icons on the screen. If the term icon is new to you, it simply means picture. Not to worry, I won't be resting on each and every button to tell you what it does right now. Throughout these introductory videos, we will play and learn with a few at a time, depending on what we have up on our design screen. The design page is the largest white area. It's where the fun takes place. At the right, you have your Properties box window. Below it, you have the Sequence view. Some other terminology to be comfortable with. The very top of our screen, we have the Menu bar. It usually has words on it. The toolbars are those that have the icon buttons. You see two toolbars at the top, one going down the left of the screen, and another going across the bottom of the screen. We will begin with one button on the left toolbar. To me, the most important button is our Select button. It's the first one on the left bar. It shows as a button with an orange background color. The mouse shows as an arrowhead on the design page. It's really your go-to button, used as your home base. If you have been working with another tool and are finished, you can click on Select and you're brought back to Ready. If you're ever unsure or seem to be stuck in something, try clicking on Select. Let's put a design on our screen to help us play and learn. The upper toolbar is called the Digitizing Toolbar. The lower one is called the Standard Toolbar. It is on this bar that I'd like you to go to the third button over. 
Do you see how when I rest on that button, a small message box comes up to tell you what that button will do? This is called a tooltip and takes total pressure off of you to remember the purpose of each button. Do you notice that the button has two parts? It has the larger button with the icon on it and then the smaller button with a down arrow. Anytime you see this arrow on a tool, it means that there are additional choices offered. Not all the tools have them. We have one here with our circle template. We have another under select and then there's another in our background tool. Click on the arrow button to see the three choices, but it's the text design we want. So we would click on the text design button. This selection brings us to just one of the many groups of free designs that come with the software. We're going to scroll down a bit until we find the butterfly, this one right here. To bring it onto our screen, we could click it once and click on OK, or we could double click it to bring it onto the screen. The butterfly comes onto the screen centered in the middle and selected. By selected, we mean that it has a black box around it and you see black squares called handles at each midpoint and each corner. To deselect the butterfly, we would click on the side of it. To select it, we click back on the butterfly. To make any changes to the butterfly, it must be selected. People who are new to software have a tendency to ask, do you mean a right click or a left click? Or I'll often hear, I never know when to left click or right click. It could be because no one has ever explained to you the reason behind your choices of using the left button or the right button. 90% of everything you do in any software will be a normal left click. I'm not saying just in Perfect Embroidery Pro, but in any software you use. Because it is the key most used, I will just say click on and you know to use the left mouse key. The right mouse button is only used to bring up what's called a shortcut menu, which is a list of actions that could be applied to the selected object. I'm now going to right click on the butterfly. That's the only time you use a right mouse click to show the shortcut menu. Here I have done the right click on the butterfly and you see all of the options that would be available to us with the selected butterfly. You see some that have black arrows. Those that do mean you have another list of options or commands that will pop out to the side of that command. Those that are grayed out mean they are not allowed to be used at the moment. When we use our right click to bring up this menu and rest on convert to, you see all of the choices here that apply to different types of stitching. The right click remember is a shortcut menu. Most of the items on a shortcut menu can be found elsewhere on the screen, under a heading on the menu bar or as one of the buttons on the toolbar. For example, if I go up to tools, digitizing, here you see the same choices that you had when you use the right click shortcut menu. Because it isn't used as frequently, I will always indicate right click on so you'll know when to use it. If I don't specify right click, then you know you are using the normal mouse key. Once again, I will right click on our butterfly. The right click is specific to the area in which you have the mouse resting. If I right click in the white part of the screen, I have a different set of choices in the shortcut menu, only two of which are available to use. If I bring my mouse up to the ruler that is rested here, I can right click in the ruler and I have a different set of shortcut options. If I were to come over and right click in the sequence view, I have another different set of options that are only specific to the sequence view. For those of you who are left-handed, you might already be aware that you can change any mouse to reverse the use of those buttons under the control panel mouse properties. I like to see things as they will look when stitched. On the left toolbar, called the toolbox, 
we're looking for this button that is the 3D cube. It's a toggle button, meaning if I click it, it'll stay on until I click it again to turn it off. It's like a light switch on the wall. We'll click it again to give us the 3D view, which is a more realistic representation of the design. If I were to turn it off, you see the direction of the threads. It's your choice. There's times when one or the other view is more appropriate to use. Let's select the butterfly again. If we want to size the design, we can drag any of the handles inward or outward. We're going to rest the mouse over one of the handles and you'll notice it turns into a two-headed black arrow. If you're not directly on the handle, you might see the mouse turn into a white hand. This allows us to move the design. Right now, to size it, we want to get that two-headed black arrow. Click and drag, drag meaning that you keep the mouse button depressed or held down while you move your mouse in some direction, in this case diagonally. The corner handles will size height and width proportionately. This midpoint handle will do the width only. This one will do the height only. Having played, we might want to return the design to its original size and shape. There are two purple arrow buttons on your digitizing toolbar. The one pointing to the left is the undo. The one pointing to the right is the redo. Undo lets you reverse your actions back to a certain point. It works the same in other software. Let's undo until the original size and shape. I continue to click on undo, and if I go too far, I simply click once on redo to put the design back on the screen. Note the information that is given at the top of the screen. It tells us the software name, Perfect Embroidery Pro. It gives us the file name, which is currently design number three. We have not yet saved the design. The stitch count shows as 2570, the colors 5, the width 1.64, the height at 1.30. We'll select the design and click and drag and we see that the stitch count has changed. It has recalculated the stitches, meaning it has either added or subtracted stitches to fill the area. A good rule to follow when sizing for minimum and maximum is 20% up and 20% down in size based on the original size. I'd like you to watch this bottom left corner. It's called the status bar and for the moment with my mouse down there there's nothing showing. Should I rest on any of the colors on the thread chart you'll see the color indications right there in the status bar. But I want you to pay attention here as I size the design. When I come up here and pick any of the handles and click and drag, notice how the height and width and scale are showing for you now down in that status bar. This is a fast way if you're just getting a, a good idea of how big or how small the design might be. If you need more accurate sizing, we need to come over to the properties window, taking a look at the toolbar listed, we want to go to the very last button called Transform. Click on that button. We see the measurement showing for width and height. If I needed a specific width, I could type in 1.75. Notice as I do so, it's also changing the height. The reason for that is the default check mark is on for maintain aspect ratio, meaning it's going to leave it proportional. We need to come back down here to the Apply button and apply it, and that size will be applied to the butterfly. If the view of the design gets positioned awkwardly or is too big on your screen, you have some options. On the digitizing toolbar, you see a white window with a percentage listed. This is called the zoom window, showing the current magnification of the screen. If I use the drop-down arrow, and choose to fit. It magnifies the design to fill the screen. 
It has nothing to do with the actual size of the design. It has not added or subtracted any stitches. We go back to the drop down arrow and click on 100 and it will show you the actual size of the design. We have a zoom button over on the left toolbar. Clicking it, we see it's active now with the orange background. If I bring my mouse onto the screen, it shows as a magnifying glass. Bringing that magnifying glass onto the design, just a little bit above the nose, I can click once, twice, maybe three times to enlarge the screen. If I right click, it will zoom back out of the design. To turn zoom off, we're going to come over here and click on select. Let's go up now to the rulers. Again, we have one at the top of the screen and the left side of the screen. Are they showing in inches or is it showing in metric? Which would you prefer? Here's a fast way to change to your preferred measurement. With the mouse resting on the ruler, right click, bringing up a shortcut menu, offering you metric or inches. The check mark is at inches because that's what's currently showing. To change to metric, we click on metric. Notice that the rulers have changed to metric, but so too has the measurement up at the top of the screen. Anytime you want to change back to inches, right click on the ruler and choose inches. Let's do that again. Right click on the ruler and in the shortcut menu, we have another command that is very helpful. It is your center origin. Once we click that, it puts the design in the center of the page vertically and horizontally. It's also increased the zoom. We can click the drop down arrow and choose 200%. It is still centered vertically on the design page and therefore also in the hoop. We'll deselect the design, clicking anywhere off to the side. And we'll come over and look at sequence view. The sequence view shows each of the objects by color and in order of stitch out. It also gives us the stitch count for each color. Click on the first gold color. Do you see that the entire butterfly is selected with all of the individual colors shown in the highlighted blue? The design is grouped, meaning all of the parts act like and are being treated as one unit, even though they are still individuals. To work with each object separately, we must do and ungroup. Looking up on the standard toolbar, we see these two buttons right here. Resting on one is group, the other is ungroup. Do you see how one is faded out? The group is faded because logically we can't use it. The design is already grouped. The only button we have available to us then is to ungroup. We'll click on ungroup, click to deselect the butterfly, come back over to our gold color, click once, and we now see because the design has been ungrouped, we can work with the individual objects of the design. With our gold selected here in sequence, we also see that it's selected here on the screen. Notice too how this color, number eight, is chosen in gold. It has a black square around it. It shows that way because this is the color that is selected. If we wanted to change that color, we could right click on any of the colors offered. Let's try it with red. Right clicking on red shows the color change. Maybe we want to come over here to the first color. Right click on number one and that color changes as well. If we actually want to change the color Specifically, if there's not the color that we are looking for on the toolbar, we can click on the color and it brings us up into the thread charts window, showing us the current brand as Madeira Poly. We could use that drop down arrow and see all of the number of thread charts listed for us. We'll go ahead and stay with Madeira Poly and we'd like a soft green color up on the screen. We'll choose this one, okay it, 
and that number one has been changed to that color, no longer being pink. It also has changed the color of that area that was selected. Remember up at the top, we saw colors five. That's how many are being used in the design. Yet we have a number of extra colors. To simplify the color tile choices, come over to the right portion of the bar and click on the minus sign in red. When we rest on it, it tells us that that's going to remove extra. Clicking it does just that. Only the five colors that are used in the butterfly are now showing. If we want to add additional color tiles, we can come over to the green plus, click as many times as we'd like to add additional colors. They are added randomly. If we see a color we don't like, again, we can click on that color and perhaps choose some other color for our design. OK that. If seven isn't to our liking, let's click on that color and maybe add another and OK. And then at any point, we can change the colors of the butterfly. If we no longer like the green, we can right click on the pink. And then if I'd like to change the blue portion, I'll come over to sequence view and click on blue and right click on purple. And now I have a different butterfly. One more thing to do to our design. We'd like the butterfly to be tilted somewhat to appear more lifelike. If we click on the butterfly, we only get a portion of it selected. The box and handles are not surrounding the entire design. We are reminded that the design is ungrouped. To affect the entire design, we must group it. There are two ways to select. In sequence view, we can go all the way to the top of the items and click on all items. You notice that the entire butterfly is selected. I'll click to unselect. The other option that you have is to bring the mouse above the butterfly itself, do a click and drag, so you are dragging a square around the entire butterfly and it remains selected. Now we can go back up to our buttons. Notice this time ungroup is faded because it's not a choice. We need to click on group and the butterfly itself is now treated as one unit. On the standard toolbar, the rotate buttons are located just about center. They are the two green circle buttons with arrows. If we rest on rotate left and click once, the design is rotated 45 degrees. Clicking again will rotate it another 45 or a perfect 90. If we decide that 90 degrees is too great and we'd like to return to the 45, we could use our undo, or we could come and click once on rotate to the right. Here we have it in the 45 degree. The design is just right, so now it's time to save it. On the menu bar, we'll come over to File, down to Save As. This is the command to use when you have not yet named the design. And we come into our window where we're going to save that design. You would use the drop down arrow on the Save In window to maneuver to the folder where you will be keeping this design. If you're not comfortable with files and folders, watch the short video Keeping Your Embroidery Designs Organized. Once in a chosen folder, come down and type the file name in this white window. We'll call ours Butterfly. Important is the Save As Type. Make sure to save it with the C2S format. This is the native format, which means it was created in Perfect Embroidery Pro and holds the proper codes for all of the features, stitch types, fonts, etc. of the design. That way, should you want to come back to this file and change it in any way, you will be able to do so. Come over and click on Save. Once back on our screen, we see now the file name has been added to our tab, and we also see it at the top of our screen. We will need to repeat the process to save the design in a format your machine can understand. We go back to File, down to Save As, because we're giving it a new name. We can leave the same file name, but importantly, we're going to change the Save As type. 
come over and use the drop down arrow and here you see all of the different machine types that you can save your design for. I'm going to choose baby lock. It's the type of machine I have. It comes and changes that format. I do a save and I now have two designs saved. One in the C2S format for me to come back and edit in this software and one in the PES format for me to stitch out on our machine. Even though this seems like a double process, it is well worth your time to have the original C2S file for future changes. Not all changes can be made to a design file that's already in a machine format. To review, we've taken a look at the screen with some of the buttons and toolbars and options. You've brought a design onto your screen by the text designs button. We sized it with the sizing handles, rotated it with the rotating buttons. We also did a group and ungroup to allow us to do different things to the design and we have saved it in both the C2S format and our machine format. At this point, if you're finished with the first design, we could click on the X to close it. We come to a screen where now we need to bring a new design page up and begin our next project. If we are finished working within the software, we would go up to the X up here in the top corner and click to close the software. We'll stop here for now. I'm Katherine Artinas, and thank you for joining me. Go create something fun in Perfect Embroidery Pro.